Hello, welcome to day four of the kettlebell program. We are almost to the home stretch and today we have a total body strength workout where we're gonna run through all of the strength workouts we've learned. So we're gonna start with some mobility and then core activation. Go on to our movement prep, that area I introduced yesterday and we'll learn a new body weight skill there. Then we're gonna move on to a lower body strength, an upper body strength, and then a little upper body and core to finish it out. So we are really going to incorporate all of the kettlebell exercises we've learned so far, one new body weight thing that I'd like you to have to be able to use tomorrow, and it's gonna be maybe one of the more intense workouts we've had so far. Like yesterday, we're breaking up our supersets by part of the body, upper or lower, so you will start to feel that, like my legs are really feeling it, but it's something you can definitely do and handle. So let's start with our mobility. Palms face up, small circles with the thumbs going back. I know you're, you're, you're really learning the drill by now. 10 circles, getting bigger each time. Good. Palms face down, small circles forward, getting a little bit bigger each time. Mm, makes my face do funny things when I go forward. Interlace the hands behind the back. Lift the arms up and down a few times, keeping those ribs down. We keep the ribs down a lot. I say that a lot, I'm sorry, but it's very important. And then you're going to hinge over those legs. Big stretch on the back of the legs. We've done deadlifts every day, I think, so far. And today will be no different. And those deadlifts, they really get into the back of the legs. Stand up, bring your feet wide, sink down into your deep squat. Drive the elbows into the inner thighs and rock back and forth. Really opening the groin here, opening the hips. Maybe you're a little deeper than yesterday. I've been saying that every day, but I want you to pay attention. What's going on? Put one hand down, twist and open the other arm up. One hand down, twist and open the other arm up couple times to each side actually I'm sitting down but that's too soon here once more to each side and now bring your hands behind you knees in front and we'll do our shin boxes three times to each side on the floor three times on each side with our hip extension these probably feeling a little smoother. They're one of those coordination things, one of the few things we do in the program where it's like, this is kind of confusing. And I get it. Hips come up, extend that front hip. Three times to each side. One more, good. And now we are gonna work our way onto our back. One set of glute bridging with both feet down, one set with each foot on the floor. So 15 with both feet, arms come up, take a big exhale through the mouth, press the lower back into the ground, brace the core, two more. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, one more. And now 15 glute bridges. Don't speed through them. Try to keep the same pace as me. The idea is we are not doing two rounds, but we're doing one really quality round. And then we'll go on to our movement prep. Good, five more. Keep the front of the body zipped up. You wanna have a nice long line from the shoulders, hips to knees. Two more. Good, and now single leg. You can either figure for the legs or track the knees in line with each other. Try not to just have the leg up here though or have it moving. We want it to stay pretty much in line with the other leg. 10 times on this side. Good, switch to the other side. Two more, good, and come down. We are going to stand up and we are going to do a one round of movement prep. Now these are 
two exercises you're familiar with and two that are new to you. So bear with me while I teach you the new ones and then we're gonna go through them all. So we are gonna start with our kettlebell good mornings, which we did yesterday. So that will be where we get the kettlebell behind the head and hinge, right? We're familiar with that. We are going to be doing our overhead hold and marching. Remember that one from yesterday, you march or you just hold in place because we're gonna be pressing up. Then one of our two new exercises. This one is a tiptoe squat. I want you to come over to a doorway, wall, maybe a chair, something that you can grab onto that's a little below your hips or below your waist. Hold on and come onto your tip, tip, tip toes. And then you're going to squat down, driving your knees forward and bringing your butt as close to those heels as possible. By bringing your heels up, much like we did on our squats on the mat the other day, you're able to get a really full range of motion and you're able to warm up the knee joint. So you see here my upper body and my back, they're staying super flat. If there was a wall behind me, if I was really in a door frame, I'd be able to keep my back on that door frame. You're gonna do this 10 times once we do it. And then finally, we'll be doing bear crawls. That's when you start at the back of your mat or you can do it across the room. And we come into our beast hold position. And then we take our opposite arm and opposite leg and move them at the same time to crawl forward and crawl backward. Now don't worry about that one too much. I'm gonna explain in detail how to do it. It's all about coordination, but that's just an overview. So grab your kettlebell for the good mornings and for the overhead hold and let's set up. Palms face away from you. Grab onto the horns of the bell, the part down by the ball. Hinge, flip it up, halo it into place. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Ribs go down, feet right underneath the hips, and then send your hips back 10 times here. Inhale down, exhale up. Three more. Bring that torso really parallel to the floor, level with the floor. You want your knees to be moving only enough to facilitate those hips. Good. Halo the bell down, put it down. Get ready for our overhead holds or marching, whichever version works for you. So you're gonna get that bell in line with your heels. Hold it with both hands, bring it up. Wrist is straight. We've talked about this before, if you have a hard time with the wrist, check out my Why Kettlebells Hurt My Wrist video and how to fix it up here. A lot of great resources there. You're gonna press the bell up and we're gonna march in place here. I want you to make sure your arm bone is in the socket. The non-working side of the body is active. Both sides of the body are the train tracks and we need them both to be going straight with each other, doing the same thing. If they're not both active, the train or the kettlebell is gonna come off the tracks. Good. We have six more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, one. Pull the bell down. Good, go on to your second side. Wrist nice and straight. Press the weight up. Pull the arm bone into the socket and go. And remember, if you can't march, just hold it in place. Keep your ribs down. It's almost harder if you don't march because it's more boring. <laughs> we got this 15 more seconds. You're halfway there. We're only doing everything one time. Five, four, three, two, one. Pull it down. Awesome job. All right, I'm just gonna push this out of the way. Now we are going into our bear crawling. So. Before we bear crawl, we're gonna just crawl like babies. Come down to all fours like you're going to do the beast hold, but leave your knees down. Now just crawl the way you would if you were a baby. You naturally have to move your opposite arm and opposite leg. That's just what happens to propel yourself forward. So now that you understand that, you can apply it to crawling with your knees up. 
it's a core exercise it's total body it's actually absolutely exhausting actually to do it for very long so I want you to be the go the length of your mat two times two forward two backward knees come up left hand right leg moves at the same time right hand left leg moves at the same time left hand right leg moves right hand left leg moves and then back it up sound like a dance try this on your own your arm and leg are almost colliding the ones that are closer to each other and you're staying low to the ground moving slowly with control you can see i'm going a little more than the length of my mat because the mat is a very short distance to go and back it up one more time and relax don't worry if that was rough for you we'll be doing it again tomorrow for time so you have the opportunity to get better and backwards is way harder than forwards so now we're going to kick off the true meat of our workout the strength we had our mobility our core our movement prep now we lift you need a heavy weight for deadlifts and a moderate weight for cut for goblet squats and if you have your heels elevated either your mat or your blocks to elevate your heels. So grab that equipment and I'll see you back here in just a second. All right, this superset is all about legs. It is squats, which work the front of the legs. We prepped our knee bends by doing our tiptoe squats on the wall and our bear crawling, and then the back of the legs with the deadlifts, and we prepped for those with our kettlebell good mornings. So we're going to be doing eight to 10 squats and 10 to 12 deadlifts, superset back and forth, you can pick the weight and the number of reps that's appropriate for you today. We're gonna to do four rounds on camera, and if you wanna do a fifth round for a little bonus work, feel free to pause and finish it on your own at the end. So, I've got my squat wedges out because you might remember from the other day, if your, toe, if your heels came up, if you had a difficult time getting deep in your squat or staying upright in your squat, you wanna elevate your heels. That's actually not the version that works best for me, but I wanted to have it here to demonstrate for you. So we'll be doing goblet squats and then deadlifts. Let's start with our goblet squats. Pull that weight in between your heels, hinge down, clean it up, back yourself up to your wedges. I am way too close to my wall over here. And then head into your eight to 10 reps. Remember, knees wanna track in line with your feet. You wanna stay as upright as possible and that bell is right in front of you, elbows going down, shoulders going down. Good, eight to 10 on your own count. Put it down safely. Keep your back pretty flat as you put it down. Now work your way up to that kettlebell for your deadlifts. I hope you're using different weights for these. You should be able to handle more in your deadlift than your squat, especially as a beginner. So kettlebell goes in line with the heels, big exhale, 10 to 12, hinge down, grab the bell, up and down. Hips back, chest is long. Keep going all the way to 12, 10 or 12. Just fixing my mic here. That is the theme of this program, is the mic on and working. I could feel it flopping around. All right, take a little rest. Take about 30 seconds of rest here, and then we will go back to our squats. Rest is dependent upon the weights you pick and the reps you're doing, but generally speaking, you want your heart rate to come back down. So I'm giving myself a chance to catch my breath so I can speak again. That's how I know that it's been long enough and it's probably been long enough for you if it's been long enough for me. Now, if you don't have any more gas in the tank, if your form starts to slip throughout any of this, just fast forward to the next section or take longer rest breaks. We don't wanna ever have sloppy reps. If, we, if you feel like you wanna keep going with this, but maybe you can't handle squatting the weight, drop the weight, do body weight squats with me today. Hinge down, grab that weight, clean it up, eight to 10. Lower down, explode up. Come down with control. You got this. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Step off the incline, pop the weight down. 
10 to 12 deadlifts again. Start with that kettlebell in line with the ankle bones. Big exhale, ribs to the hips, tailbone to the floor. Hinge down, grab your kettlebell. Good, keep going. This is 10 for me. And pop that weight down. We are halfway through. Let's take our rest and then we'll keep going with our squats and deadlifts. I hope that you're learning a lot throughout this program, but if you feel like you'd like to learn more, get yourself on the wait list for the She Beast program. It's my 12 week kettlebell program. You are gonna be in perfect shape coming out of this intensive to go into the She Beast program because by week two, we're getting into cleaning, swinging, get ups, all of the advanced kettlebell specific movements. So you are getting yourself in really good shape by doing this because you already understand the fundamental movement patterns. And even though she beasts can be for beginners, people who come in with a good solid baseline of understanding basic exercise pat movement patterns get tenfold more out of the program than those who know nothing about exercise walking in. So get yourself on the wait list at emmabfit.com slash shebeast. You will get the first information about the January class, which is gonna, when you get that information, you'll get a great discount code. And I really hope to see you there because you get to work with me live one-on-one -on -one and in a group setting and you get lots of feedback. So if you're really not sure if you're doing this stuff right, it's your opportunity to find out for real. So hinge down, grab the kettlebell, clean it up. Third set of squats. Inhale down, exhale up. Come down with control, explode out of the hole. If you have a hard time coming up and you feel like you're leaving with your lower back, do a Kegel at the bottom and come up. Kegel, come up, that's squeezing the pelvic floor. Eight to 10, come off your Incline, pop them down, and another set of deadlifts. All right, hinge down, grab that kettlebell, press your feet into the floor, corkscrew the arms into the socket, press into the floor as you pull the kettlebell up. You wanna feel wedged between the floor and your bell. <sighs> Squeeze the front and the back of the legs at the same time. We don't wanna have the lower back arch and the hips come forward like that. Two more. Good, put the bell down. Rest and we will do our final round. And you're welcome to do a fifth one, but I'm personally good with four. I'd be good with three, but I know better. I know we wanna get four. This is all the leg workout you're gonna get in the program. Today, as you can see, we did two leg exercises in this program, squats and deadlifts. They're the basic ones. You can work on them for months and months and months, years and years and years, and you'll still continue to improve them. I feel like my squat form only got good a year and a half ago. I've been exercising for six years. So with that said, grab your kettlebell, hinge down, and we're gonna go in our last set of goblet squats. Down and up, eight to 10. One more gets me to 10. Hopefully you got 10 as well, finishing strong. 10 to 12 deadlifts again. We wanna finish strong. Big exhale. Really helps to bring the heart rate down too. Hips go back. Grab onto the bell, corkscrew the arms in the socket, press the feet into the floor. Keep your toes drilled into the floor with each rep. Don't let those toes rock up. I hope you're barefoot. Three more, 10, 11, 12, and relax. Whew. 
that felt good. You can go ahead and clear out your heavy bell. We are going to be doing overhead pressing and bent over rows now. So we're gonna hit the tricep, this part of the arm, with the overhead pressing, bicep, this part of the arm, with the bent over row. You see there's a theme here today. Front and the back of the leg, front and the back of the arm. This is, these are all different ways you can assemble workouts. And that's one of the reasons why I'm showing them all to you here this week. So you can understand the different ways you can utilize kettlebells in your own training. So swap out that, or get rid of your heavy weight. We're just gonna need our lightweight and an elevated surface to lean on for the bent over rows, like a chair or a bench. So as always, we'll see you in one second with your equipment. Here we are with one lightweight in our elevated surface. As we practiced yesterday, we're gonna be going back to those overhead presses. Now, if you're in an exercise program where there's lots of exercises to pick from, whole world of exercises, you typically wouldn't do the same thing two days in a row when it came to your bigger lifts. But this is an intensive where we're learning how to do a few things in a short period of time. So yes, we're doing things back to back, but no, we're not doing them so intensely that you can't do them two times in a row. We walk every day. It's not like all of a sudden walking becomes something you can't do anymore. So with that said, we're gonna do the overhead pressing. That's where we get the kettlebell into the front rack. Press it up and pull it down. It goes up in that J shape. We wanna have our feet right underneath our hips and the kettlebell starts here, ends here, and takes a little J to get up. Five to 10 on the left, five to 10 on the right. Then we'll come down into our three point bent over row. This is where you hinge down send the hips back and you wanna feel like you are supported by your legs. Then you're gonna lean on the chair and you'll pull the kettlebell up into the ribs, only moving the arm. We're familiar with both of these exercises. I don't need to spend too much time explaining them. So without further ado, three rounds of this, of course, optional fourth round off camera if you want. We're gonna clean the bell up, bring the feet together. Actually, you know what? Today, we are gonna start on your less strong side. Not your weaker side, just the less strong side. So for me, that's the left, because you have more energy if you start on the side that's not as strong to get through it. So five to 10 overhead presses. <sighs> Inhale as you come down, exhale as you come up. Remember, keep those ribs, ribs down, squeeze your butt. <sighs> you got this. five to 10, bring the weight down, go to the other side. Remember, flat back whenever we're picking the weight up or putting it down, that's just general safety. Five to 10 on the other side. Notice the difference side to side. And keep that non-working arm out, keep tension in that side of the body. Good, switch to your bent over rows. Now, if you have lots of weight options, you might wanna go a little heavier on the bent over row. Hinge back, lean on the chair, grab the bell, five to 10 here. Arm bone, corkscrew into the socket. You don't want that shoulder to be all lax. Five to 10. Inhale down, exhale up. other side. One more. Good. Stand up, relax, shake it out. We're hitting the bicep and the tricep. This is that arm goodness. You can always do tricep extensions and bicep curls, but these are more interesting and work more of the body. So it's just a better use of your time. So we are going to once again, hit those overhead presses, starting on the less strong side, clean the weight up, five to 10. Nine, 10. 
whew, they get tiring. Second side, hinge down, clean the bell up. Straight wrist the whole time, okay? Don't let that wrist bend back. Keep the ribs down, squeeze the butt. You're a pillar, you're not coming down. And when you come down, that elbow parks down by the waist. I want the elbow to come all the way to the waist. Good. Come down. Start with the less strong side on the rows. I didn't do that last time, but I should have. Sit the hips back. Your legs are supporting you. Your arm is just an assist. Pull the arm into the socket. Five to ten here. One more. Good. And then the last, second side. All right. And now your second side. Grab the kettlebell, pull the arm bone into the socket. One more round. Something I want to note while we're resting is you want to inhale when gravity is doing the work. So when your arm is extending in the row, when you're squatting down in the squat, when you're leaning forward in the deadlift, you're not working as hard. You're resisting gravity. You're making sure your body doesn't get contorted and pulled, but you're not working that hard. The real energy comes when you are working against gravity, when you're pulling the weight into the chest, when you're standing up, when you're pulling the weight up, right? It's sometimes it's when the body extends, but it's always when you're working against gravity. So that's when you exhale and you exhale hard. And there's power in the breath. It can keep you moving at a good tempo. It can keep you from getting as out of breath quickly because you're breathing at the correct time. In through the nose, out through the mouth is going to keep you breathing at the most comfortable rate to get the most work done. So on that note, once again, we're gonna start on the less strong side, clean the bell up, five to 10, final round. Good. You could hear my breathing and always a flat back when we come back down. Clean the weight up. Feet right underneath you. Ribs down. Glutes on. Good. Come down. Last set of bent over rows. Hinge over that chair. Hips go back. My legs are supporting me. My hand is just a kickstand. Pull the arm bone into the socket. Exhale when it's down. Inhale up. Five to ten. Keep your toes down. Second side. Inhale as you or inhale at the bottom, exhale as you pull up. And relax, awesome work. So for our finisher, we're going to be doing chest pressing and side planks. So clear away your elevated surface, grab a chest press weight. If, again, if you had three weights, the one you did the bent over row, row with, it's probably the right weight for your chest press. We're gonna be finishing strong with that and then stretching it out. So I'll see you in a second with the right equipment and let's get going. We are gonna be on the floor for the rest of the workout and by now you probably know I love my floor exercises. Not only are they great, but they're kind of lazy. Like you get to lay down while you do them. So we are going to do our floor press on our left and right sides, eight to 10 times per side. And then we're gonna follow it up with a 15 second side plank on the left and the right. 
We'll repeat this for three rounds with the option for a fourth round on your own off camera. So without further ado, you can just go ahead and do this with me. You're gonna lie on your side, grab the kettlebell in the hand that it wants to live in, other hand on top. You see this a lot? We're maneuvering the bell with both hands because it takes energy to get it up and we wanna save our energy for our lift. And you're gonna roll onto your back, adjust that weight, press your back into the floor, non-working arm is driving the elbow into the floor here, and then you're gonna pull the arm down at a 45 degree angle, keeping the wrist really straight, eight to 10 times on each side. Really drive the foot into the floor on the side that you're pressing with. This is gonna help stabilize the body, because you'll notice it wants to rock. Inhale down, exhale up. Good. And then we can halo the kettlebell around the body to the other side, roll over and pick it up on this side. Press the back into the floor, drive the elbow into the floor. Eight to 10. Elbow is at a 45 degree angle. It's not up by my shoulder. It's not down by my waist and my wrist is straight. Think of curling the wrist in Good, and relax. Put that weight down. We are going to come into our side plank. So to do that, I'd like you to have your hand just in front of your shoulder and your bottom leg bent. This is gonna be a kickstand. Then we're gonna come up on the count of three, two, one, and we're gonna reach this leg away from us, reach our arm up, and be a long straight line from knee to armpit on the lower side. That bottom side is long, top leg is reaching away. This makes the side plank a total body exercise. And three, two, one. Come down and we're gonna go to the other side. Again, hand is just in front of the shoulder, bottom leg is bent, come up, reach that leg away. Good, and we're holding here for 15 seconds. Breathe. It's harder on the second side because both legs are already tired. And three, two, one, come down. Beautiful. I didn't have quite enough room over there for my chest press before, so we're gonna take it to this side. Rest for a moment. We have two more rounds. This is quick. Chest press is always quick. Your arms are small and it's a very small range of motion, so it goes fast. All right, come onto your side. And this time we're gonna take the glute bridge variation if you want. So we're going to lift the hips up to get a little deficit when our elbow comes down. Drive the opposite arm that's not working into the floor and press the leg, especially the leg that's uh, on the same side as the kettlebell, especially hard into the floor. Pull the elbow down and up. Inhale down, exhale up, eight to 10. Keep those hips up. Good, bring the hips down. Bring the kettlebell around to the other side. Roll over, bring it up. Elbow drives into the floor. Hips come up, feet drive into the floor. Eight to 10, inhale down, exhale up. Elbow is 45 degrees away from the body. It's not up by the shoulder. My wrist is straight and try to control it as it comes down. You want that kettlebell to be moving straight up and down as much as possible. You don't want it wobbling too much and you don't want your elbow slamming into the floor. Good. All right, we're gonna come into our side plank again. Get ready, you know the drill now. Hand down, if it hurts too much on your wrist, you can also do the same thing on your forearm. And go. Good, reach that leg far away. Keep holding and counting. Not counting, I'm counting and breathing, holding and breathing. And three, two, one, switch sides. Bottom leg is your kickstand. You wanna start with those knees lined up with your hips and your hand. This wants to be a relatively straight line. And then we come up, good. And breathe. Reach the leg away from you. It's like somebody's pulling on your leg like they're playing tug of war. Five, four, three, two, 
one, come down, last set of chest pressing, and last set of planking. All right, we don't need much rest here. This is, I would say, the least demanding circuit of the bunch, at least for me. You can be the own, your own judge as a, you're the one doing it on your end. Kettlebell up, hips up, elbow drives into the floor, feet drive into the floor, keep those hips up, squeeze the stomach, eight to 10. Keep that wrist straight. Inhale down, exhale up. Elbow comes down, hips come down, halo the bell around your head. Last one here. Hips come up, elbow drives into the floor, feet drive into the floor. Keep the wrist straight. I'm reminding myself too, it's hard to do. It's not natural. The kettlebell wants to pull your wrist back, but fight it. Think of like revving a motorcycle that we have to rev it forward, or so I've seen on TV. Do that, push forward. Good, bring your bell down, get it out of the way. Last set of planking. Come to the hand, knee, and hips are all in that relatively straight line. It's hard to be super straight, but you will straighten out when you come up if you're more or less straight in the beginning. And three, two, one, go. Reach that leg away. Reach your arm up. Have a long lower side body here. Good. Keep holding. Five, four, three, two, one. Come down and go to the second side. All right, get ready. We're coming up in three, two, one. Again, reach the leg away, reach the arm up. There's more to this side plank than just the side that's on the floor holding me up. I would say that's the part you need to think about least, but pull the shoulders apart. Chest is completely flat. It's like your flagpole from your hand to hand here. And come down. Awesome job. That was amazing. I hope you had a great workout today. Tomorrow is the final day of the program and it's a conditioning workout. We're gonna be combining exercises in ways you didn't know you'd learned how to do them yet and make a cardio conditioning workout, meaning your heart rate's going to be up. I'm gonna do my best for you to be able to understand me over my heavy breathing because I am not used to doing cardio workouts on camera, but we're all gonna make it happen and you are going to get a fantastic workout out of it. So right before that, let, or before that, you have the rest of your day and we wanna make it the best, so let's do a little stretching. We're gonna start by pulling the legs into the chest and do a few small circles to the left. Notice, do your hips feel tight? And then small circles to the right. If your hips feel really tight, you should check out the video I have on total body cool down stretching. I'll link to it up here. It's the one from the freemium, um, the free kettlebell guide. It is a great, great variety of stretches, including a lot of hip ones. If that front of the hip felt really kind of ginchy and painful when you pull the legs in. Now we're gonna figure for the left leg over the right, grab, or the right leg over the left, grab the left thigh and pull that leg in. Ooh. Outer hip feels that. Press your right hand into your right knee and push and pull at the same time. And now other side, left leg over right knee. Pull on the right thigh. And then push on the left leg and pull on the right. All right, now we're gonna sit up with our legs crisscross applesauce. If you feel like your knees are up here, sit up on a pillow or yoga block if you have it. And then we're just gonna walk our hands forward, keeping our back as long and flat as possible. Walking the hands all the way forward and letting the head fall and breathe. 
You're going to feel an intense stretch on the hip that is on the front leg of this crisscross. Try to keep your hips on the floor and breathe. And then walk your hands back up. Cross your legs the other way. It's going to feel weird. That's how you know you did it right. And then walk your hands back out again. You can see I have my fingers tented up like this to keep my hip bones on the floor. Let my body be heavy and fold over the legs. And then walk the hands back up. Straighten your legs out. And then you're going to put your left leg over your right. You're going to take your right elbow and put it on the outside of the left knee. Left hand comes behind you and twist and open. And I don't want you to be here. I want you to open your chest. Really press the arm on the leg here. And release. And now we're going to put the right leg over the left. Left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Right hand comes behind me, tented up fingers. And I'm not here. I'm going to press into the floor and press the elbow into the knee and twist and open my chest and twist that back. It's going to feel real good to get that lumbar spine twist after all the hinging. And then release. And that is it. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a super strong day. And if you want to learn more, check out my website, emmabfit.com. Subscribe to my weekly newsletter where I send out lots of gems each week that don't hit Instagram or YouTube. And of course, follow me on Instagram. I put tons of stuff there too. Have a great day.